with headache and nausea. And here are your first couple of images. And here are some additional images. And we'll jump right in with our first question, which is the abnormal T1 hyperintense substance in the brain is composed of one lipid, two proteinaceous fluid, three hemorrhage, four melanin, or five mineralization. Have some nice music. Uh, excellent. Uh, yes, the correct answer is lipid. And uh, as you can see here, the reason we know that this is lipid is these droplets that are in the ventral floating. So they're less dense than the um, water in the CSF. Uh, and in addition to that, very nicely, we can see here this chemical shift artifact at the boundary of the lipid and the water interface. There's this dark line inferiorly and bright line superiorly. And you get that at interfaces of water and lipid. That's known as chemical shift artifact. Now, all of those that I mentioned actually are intrinsically bright on T1. And here we have a case of uh, craniopharyngioma. And in the cysts of the craniopharyngioma are proteinaceous fluid. And depending on the concentration of the protein, you can get intrinsic T hyperintensity, as we have here. Um, you can see actually there's some content of protein in all of this cyst between the T2 and the flare image is not saturated out on the flare. Uh, hemorrhage can also be bright on T1. This is a patient with amyloid angiopathy, and we see the really nice low bar hemorrhage here. This is a chronic hemorrhage. We can see it's intrinsically bright on T1. It's also bright on T2. That's extracellular methemoglobin, and it also has the nice hemosiderin rim. This is a chronic hemorrhage. Uh, this patient actually also had an acute fear of intense on T1 and has a combination of sort of ISO to slight intensity on T2, very dark intensity T2, and a mixture of oxy and deoxyhemoglobin, respectively. Melanin can also be in T1. This is a patient with melanoma to the and we can see the bright T1 signal here from the paramagnetic effect of the melanin. And lastly, mineralization can also be bright on T1. And we can see this bright signal here in the uh, basal ganglia. This can be due to either calcification in conditions such as hyperparathyroidism, pseudo-hypoparathyroidism, or um, uh, hyperparathyroidism. Um, it can also be bright due to manganese dep deposition, which you can get in total parenteral nutrition administration or in liver failure. Okay, so knowing that this is lipid in this uh, case, this was a ruptured dermoid. And these were the original images that I showed you, showed you which are without contrast. These are contrast images. Here we can see the enhancement in the dural sinus as well as in the chorodexis. And intrinsically, there's probably not too much enhancement of this lesion. But the best thing that you can do to help nail this diagnosis is do a fat sat. And here's a fat sat after gadolinium. Again, we can see the enhancement cavernous sinuses and pituitary, and the uh, lesion completely uh, sats out, tells that it definitely is lipid. Now, I like to think of uh, dermoids in this respect. They're ectodermal inclusion cysts. And uh, like an epidermoid, for example, which is also made of ectoderm, that's only composed of skin. So that has desquamated squamous keratinizing epithelium. But a dermoid has skin as well as the adjacent uh, subcutaneous tissues. So in addition to having the desquamated uh, uh, keratinizing epithelium, there's going to be fat, there's going to be hair, and there's going to be sweat and sebaceous glands, and thus the imaging appearance. So that brings us to our next question. A little bit harder here, a little bit of a physics question early in the morning. The following are true regarding that chemical shift artifact. One, it occurs in the phase coding gradient direction. Two, it occurs in the frequency encoding gradient direction. Three, the resonance shift between fat and water is 3.5 parts per million. Or four, one and three. Or five, two and three. AC, DC, that's great. Um, okay, so uh, number five is correct. You guys got that, majority got that right. And um, that is because the reason you get that chemical shift artifact is that fat and water spin at slightly different resonances or slightly different frequencies. So when you map their location in the frequency encoding direction, they get slightly mismapped, and that causes that artifact at the edges. Now, the difference in their spinning or their frequency or resonance is 3.5 parts per million. Now, I remember that the easy way from magnetic resonance spectroscopy 
um, which is water, is at 4.7 and lipid is at 1.2 parts per million, and the difference between those is 3.5 parts per million. Now, some of you may also uh, recall the fact that the difference in resonance is 220 hertz. However, that's a derived number. That's actually from this 3.5 parts per million times the long more frequency of hydrogen times 1.5 T. That's where that number comes from. But it's better to use 3.5 parts per million because if you're thinking about a three system, this number will be closer to 150 hertz. It changes. 3.5 parts per million always stays a field strength independent. It's the better term. Okay, so that brings us now to case two. This is a 27-year-old postpartum female with a history of lupus who presents with headache, nausea, and decreased mentation. And here are your first images. <laughs> 